Hey, everybody. So I was listening to a radio story this morning about how whales may have a phonetic alphabet, which would make them the first animals besides us to have one of those. Here's what it sounds like. So I heard that and my first thought was, kind of sounds like Max MSP. It's a rhythmic thing. Uh, so I set about trying to kind of recreate this in Max, but let me start by telling you about the science. Let me just talk about how this works, as well as I understand it anyway. So here's the paper here. It was in the journal Nature by Pratusha Sharma, who's a computer scientist, I guess a data scientist would be the best way to put it, uh, working with data that had come, I think, from whale biologists. And basically what Sharma did was statistically analyze these recordings uh, and was able to boil down the sounds that the whales are making into, I think it's four or five uh, sort of dimensional characteristics. So this graphic kind of shows all of them really usefully. So the first thing is this idea of a rhythm which is a train of pulses that occurs within a short period of time, like one second. And there can be anywhere from like three to like eight of them. And there are, they are defined by the number of pulses that are in them or the number of clicks that are in them and the relative amount of time between each click. And there's about 18 unique types of these rhythms, which I'll show you in a little bit. So this is one, this is a different one, this is the same one as this one, and so on and so forth. What's interesting about these is that it's about the relative distance between them because the total amount of time that the rhythm can take to occur is variable. And that's sort of the second dimension of the language, which uh, the author here calls tempo so the amount of time between the first event and the last event is this concept of tempo. And the amount of time in between each of these events in the coda, which is the coda is the kind of um, collection of these pulses. And uh, so there's, there's two concepts we understand here. The first is the rhythm, which is the relative distance between the events. And the second is the tempo, which is the total amount of time over which the coda occurs. The third dimension is this idea called rubato, which is basically change in the tempo over the course of a conversation between multiple whales. So when the whales are talking to one another, their tempo, the amount of time between the beginning and the end of the codas, is will change. And they'll change together. So here we're seeing two whales talking to one another, a blue whale and an orange whale. And the vertical stacks here are showing the codas. And the, as you can see, the, the distance between the bottom event, the first event, and the top, the last event, will change over time. So that's the change in the tempo, is basically the height of this top line. And you can see that these two whales are in sync in terms of what the tempo they're using is. So that's this concept of rubato, which is borrowed from music, actually. The final uh, characteristic of whale language that this researcher identified was this idea of ornamentation, which is an event that happens after a coda sometimes, but isn't really part of the coda and isn't part of, doesn't, um, it's not, is not uh, part of the rhythm, right? Because the rhythm is this idea of a sort of a typology of a specific coda, and there's like 18 rhythms. But sometimes you'll get this ornamentation that's like another event later after the coda. And they found that there's some interesting, um, some interesting trends around how these ornaments are used. They're more common towards the beginning of the conversation and towards the end than they are during the middle. And I think it also said somewhere that they happen more often when there is a dramatic change in the tempo. 
So when we think about this idea of the rubato, the tempo changing, the ornaments occur at sort of steeper parts of the rubato curve, I guess you could say. I think. I, I think I remember it saying that. Scrolling down a little more, there's a good chart. So a few things to point out. The first one is this tempo. So there are like five tempos that are very common. So this is like this multimodal distribution here where they've kind of identified five uh, tempos, which again is the, the amount of time between the first event and the last event that, that um, tend to be important. So this is sort of clustering in terms of that tempo. Second is the actual rhythm. So here from left to right, you can see a bunch of these rhythms. And in a second, I'll show you all 18 of them or 17. No, it's 18 of them. Uh, and I think that's basically all I wanted to do here. And then let me show you, there's a good table with the rhythms. Oh, right there. So you could see what they look like. There's, oh, here, here's a really good one. So on the Y axis here, you can see all the different rhythms. And this chart is actually pretty interesting. It's showing uh, how likely the whale is to switch from any rhythm to any other rhythm. And then similarly, this one is showing how likely the whale is to switch from any tempo to any other tempo. And you could see here there's that these specific values, 0 0.33, 0 0.51, 0 0.8, it's so on and so forth, those correspond to those uh, sort of spikes in that distribution that I showed you earlier, these spikes here. So I spent a little time trying to make a patch here. I certainly did not capture all of what's going on here because um, there's lots of complexity, but I kind of tried the best that I could do to approximate it. So let me show you the patch. Okay. Uh, I'll start by just playing it for a little bit. So we have two whales, one on the left, one on the right. And there's four seconds between each coda. So that was a coda. And that's because the paper says that usually the codas are about four seconds apart. And sometimes just one whale will go, sometimes the other one will go, and sometimes they actually overlap. So sometimes you'll get both of them going at the same time. I didn't encode a lot of the, the sort of complex statistics like that two-dimensional chart that we just saw about how likely they are to go from one uh, rhythm to the next or one tempo to the next. So a little bit less sophisticated there. Uh, basically, I'm just picking randomly or kind of weighted probabilities used, uh, to, to pick. But I'll show you a little bit of, of that in a second. And then I sampled uh, just from the podcast the, uh, the sound of the whales and I'm just playing that back uh, with this one a little bit lower. Let's actually bring this this guy down a little more. Oops, <laughs> that's a very high pitch. There we go. So now you can kind of hear them separately. This one's the bassier whale. Ooh, that was cool. So let me take you through this patch. Um, so let's start with the rhythm. Uh, I basically, with the help of ChatGPT, took the code from Sharma, the researcher, and which was Python, and got it to produce for me the rhythms, which I have stored in this dictionary here. So these are basically the cumulative interclick intervals. So the interclick interval is the amount of time uh, between each click. Actually, it's the amount of time from the first click to each click as a proportion of the total amount of time that the coda takes. So here we have 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and 1. So this is a four-click coda. The first event happens at the beginning. Then 30% uh, of the 
total time later, we get the second one, then 0. Uh, 60% of the total time, 62%, we get the next one, and then we get the final one, right? And so the reason that we've represented these this way as just values between zero and one is that we can now uh, vary the tempo, vary the amount of time, the total amount of time between the first and the last event, but preserve this relative spacing because that's really what the rhythm is all about. It's not about an absolute amount of time between two events. It's about a relative amount of time between two events. So these are kind of the weird names of these rhythms. And then they're all just stored here in this dictionary and we have all of them. So I can actually pick one and it will output it. And I've actually written, made a little JSUI here that will display the rhythm. And then if we trigger, oops, I turned the sound off. If we trigger, it'll actually walk through it. So that's the first thing, kind of encoding the rhythms. Uh, then we have a scheduler. So like I said, they happen about four seconds apart on average. So I just used a phaser at 0 0.25 hertz, which means that we're going to get a ramp from zero to one every four seconds. So at the end of that ramp, if we you know, use a what object, or in this case, I'm using uh, gen with generating sound and organizing times go.ramp to trig, which is basically the same thing as the what object. It just uh, looks for this phaser to finish and it'll give us a pulse. So that basically means that coming out here, we're gonna get a pulse every four seconds. Um, and then I just have a little bit of math here or sort of a little bit of randomness here that's basically just deciding whether we're gonna get the just the left whale, just the right whale, or both of them together. And there's just a one third chance of each of those things. Then um, we trigger that whale to play. And we also figure out what the tempo is going to be uh, for this particular coda. And the way that we do that is with kind of um, with this rubato concept. And I won't go into tons of detail here on the patching, but basically what we're doing is we're saying there's a 15% chance that we're going to go from a shorter coda, we're going to go to a shorter coda duration, so a faster tempo. There's a 60% chance that we're going to stay on the same uh, coda duration, and there's a 50% chance that we're going to go to a longer coda duration. So because the codas, or sorry, the, the tempos, the durations, there's five options. We can just make a little accumulator, which is right here, which is gonna eventually spit out a value between zero and four. And we can just basically say 50% chance that we're gonna subtract from that number, 50% chance that we're gonna add to that number, and 60% chance that it's going to be the same number. Um, if we go out of bounds, right, if we're on zero and we return, go to a shorter uh, tempo, uh, this bit here, we'll just try again. So not the most sophisticated, but we'll just say, hey, you know, if you, <laughs> if you accidentally went to something uh, incorrect, then just try again. And so what that allows us to do is kind of step the coda along, I'm sorry, the tempo along in the faster or slower duration, um, direction. And then what we'll also do is in the case where we actually do change tempo, that is when we are going to decide if an ornament is going to happen. And somewhere in the paper, it said that ornaments happen about 4% of the time. So I kind of just did a little math and said, hey, you know, randomly, if the tempo did change, maybe produce an ornament, and it will choose which of the two whales will actually produce that ornament. So that's happening in here. Uh, the actual timing is all happening using stuff that I've talked about on this channel a whole bunch, right? So we get uh, a bang that tells the whale to produce its coda, uh, which goes into a ramp object, which produces a ramp whose length is the tempo. And then we use the what object, which is taking in those rhythms, these guys, and very conveniently, this is exactly what what is designed to take in, right? What wants just a list of floating point numbers, and it will just output pulses when it sees those numbers. 
uh, which is pretty awesome, right? So it, it works exactly the way that we hope it might. And then I have a little bit of patching in here that kind of keeps track of what, um, what event we're on so that we can light the JS UIs up. And then we just trigger sounds with these little impulses. So I don't know if I'll take this further. Um, there's a lot more definitely to do because there's a lot of places where I'm kind of just fudging things and saying, oh, you know, random or 50% of the time, 16% of the time, whatever, uh, that really are, you know, the, the, the math, the, the work that Sharma did shows much more order to the way that the, the whales are communicating with one another. So a lot like human language, there's, there's not rules, but there's sort of, there's sequences of events or sequences of conditions that are far more common than other sequences. And it's not just a random jumble of things. And I think, you know, that's sort of what is exciting about this research and why the argument is being made that this is a phonetic alphabet, because there are so many specific uh, kind of rules being followed, basically. So it'd be fun to try to really encode into this patch all of those rules. For example, if we go back to the paper, like this, I couldn't actually find in the code this chart. And it's probably good that I didn't because it would have taken me a long time to figure out how to actually make use of it. But this would be cool if instead of just randomly selecting a new, um, a new rhythm, which is what I'm doing, we actually select the next rhythm intelligently based upon um, this data, right? So we'll see if that actually happens. Uh, but in the meantime, this is fun. As always, you'll be able to find the link in uh, the description down below. I'll also include the link to the podcast that I listen to, as well as, of course, to the paper itself. Um, yeah, that's it. See you all soon. Thanks.